Hey guys, Tyler with Meeple Mountain here, bringing you another board game review. This time from our friends at Starling Games. They've resurrected a classic title, Alien Frontiers. They've created a new edition, Edition X, to celebrate the anniversary of this great game, and they're bringing it out with all of the expansions packed into one great box. There's a lot of exciting content in here. If you're familiar with this, it's one of the um, older, more original titles that really introduced the dice as worker placement style game, uh, created kind of a new niche in the industry and I'm really excited to show you guys what's packed into this box. A uh, really fun classic title with some expansions that were just hard to find, honestly. So this reprint is very timely and I'm very excited to get to the table and show you all how to play and what my thoughts are about what is packed into this title. So without further ado, let's jump in and learn how to play Alien Frontiers Edition X. Welcome to the world of Alien Frontiers. In this exciting dice as worker placement game, you and up to three opponents will be working to colonize this frontier planet by placing these adorable little bubbled colony locations all across the map. You'll be doing this to claim area control bonuses for these various regions of the planet to gain additional advantages, victory points, and ultimately win the game. The game will conclude when one player places their last colony, which in a four-player game like we have here will be their sixth colony. You'll be working to place these out in various locations uh, by gaining additional dice that'll be your ships, those are your workers, to go on to these various actions across the board to gain the resources that are in this game, which would be solar or metal. You'll be using those resources to generate additional income, uh, place more dice, and ultimately place your colonies out onto the map. Alien Frontiers has some really interesting player interaction elements where your dice actually will remain out on the board throughout your turn and into other players' turns, and they're only reclaimed when you start your next turn. So as you place on these various locations, you're actually doing a little bit of blocking of some of the locations as well, which can be really interesting and create great player interaction moments throughout the game. Placing your colonies into this main planet section acts as a bit of an area control aspect, as the person with the most colonies in a particular region will claim that colony's specific bonus. If another player ties you for colonies, the bonus will return back to the map itself, and if they ever get more colonies there than you, then they will steal that bonus away from you. So you'll be using some tactical maneuvering to place your colonies out onto the map. We'll zoom in and talk about all of the locations and kind of what they will do and how they work and function in just a minute. But I do want to touch on the fact that this uh, version of Alien Frontiers Edition X that Starling has put out also includes three modular expansions that you can add to the game at your discretion. We have the Asteroid Field, which is located over here, in which players now have a choice to visit the Asteroid Belt, uh, interacting with additional card options and trying to ultimately colonize the Blish Expanse, which is a new region of the board. So this kind of is a modular add-on that adds additional options, strategy, and elements to the game. The Alien Frontiers faction boards, which give each player a unique kind of home orbital facility that they can use for free with a great benefit, and that other players can use if they pay the toll, the tax, to utilize that facility. We'll zoom in and look at those in a second, but that's a great addition to the game as those were very challenging to find for quite some time. Finally, we have the faction's agenda cards, which add a in-game bonus as well as a mid-game bonus that you can attempt to claim for your particular faction as you play. All of those modules we'll zoom in and talk a little bit about after we talk about the main game, but it's very exciting to know that you have a lot of replayability and depth that comes in this version of the game. So, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and jump in and look at the main board and talk about how your dice will work on a player turn and what are some of the options that you can choose to do with them. All right, we're zooming in a little bit here to look at the main player map of Alien Frontiers. So I wanna talk a little bit more about what each of these locations do and what you can expect on your turn. Now again, we were set up for a four player game. So what you'll start the game with is you're going to start with uh, six colonies, which again, if you place your sixth colony in the game, that will conclude the game, go to end game scoring. You'll start with three ships, which are your workers, so three dice. You can have a total of six at your disposal at any given time, and you'll start with one alien tech card. And there's a deck of alien tech cards throughout the game that you can acquire, and these are going to be special abilities that you'll read the text on them, and they'll tell you specifically when you can use them, but they're going to give you some form of tactical edge or advantage as you play throughout the game of Alien Frontier. So they're always handy to have. They are a resource and can be stolen. Speaking of resources, there's two main currencies in the game, which are metal and solar. You'll be using those for all of the actions throughout the game. 
On your turn, you're going to roll, collect and roll if you need to, your ships, so all of your workers, and you're going to then make tactical decisions based on the dice values that you have rolled on where to go throughout the locations in Alien Frontiers. You'll place all of your dice to conclude your turn, and then it will go to the next player. Your dice will stay on whatever locations you've put them on and could potentially block or mess with your opponent's plans as they go throughout the game. Now, I'm going to walk through each of these locations, but as, you, as we do, just keep in mind that the main goal of the game is to collect um, locations by putting colonies out here on the board, collecting their bonuses to give you a tactical edge. At the end of the game, you're going to score points for your colonies placed, locations that you control uh, on the map, which means the most colonies in those sectors. So you'll want to make sure you're making tactical decisions about where to go and how to uh, kind of capture and control these different areas on the planet. So let's go ahead and start at the top here. Again, as you go, you're going to use all your dice and you're going to place them on these various unoccupied locations. Some of these spaces you'll see have little blocks uh, with a certain number of players. That means if it's a two-player game, for the shipyard for instance, you could only have one space uh, for three and then for a four, you'll open up more locations. So there's a few examples of that throughout the board. But let's start up here. At the solar converter, you can place any number of your dice here that you would like, and you'll gain a number of solar per dice equal to their face value. So if I place a five or a six here, so in instance I could place my six here, and I would get three solar. Again, I'll be using solar to buy and do different things throughout, uh, throughout the game. Up here we have the orbital market. You'll need to place two dice of equal value. And then what you can do is you can pay solar uh, equal to the value of one of those dice you play. So say I put two twos there. I could pay two solar to get a metal. I can do that as many times as I want. So obviously you want to put lower value dice there if you have a pair so that you can really convert your solar into metal very efficiently. That's one of the ways that you can kind of upgrade your solar into metal. Uh, next we have the alien artifact. Here you can put any number of dice that you want, but if you put a dice, there's going to be a pile of cards up here. There'll be three artifact cards out at any given time. And you can cycle those if you want to by placing a die there. If you place dice equal to or greater than the value of eight total, you can actually take one of those cards and add them to your hand. The one rule to remember is that you can never have duplicate alien tech cards. So you couldn't have three of the same card, for instance. But you'll be able to look at those, optimize them, you could potentially cycle them, and then draw one if you place enough cards there. Again, those are always handy and give you a lot of options as you go throughout the game. The Raider Outpost is a little bit of the player interaction or the take that element of the game. Every dice that you put here has to be in ascending order. So you need to have like a four, five, six, uh, something in a numerical ascending order. And when you do, you'll place them there and then you're able to take a mix of either four resources, so solar and metal from another player, or an alien tech card from them. So this is a little bit of a, a steal option there if you so want to. Uh, these cards can be bumped out as well, like if, if someone had dice here, I could put my dice in and send theirs over to the maintenance bay, which is kind of like the, the waiting area for your ships if you can't do anything with them at a given time. The lunar mine down here, we'll see that again the dice that go here have to be greater than uh, or equal to the dice placed before, so they have to keep kind of growing. And when you place here, you'll get amount of metal equal to the die that you place there, so that can be very handy. Again, another way to gain metal. Down here at the Colony Constructor, uh, you'll have to put three equal die, so three matching die, which is challenging at the start of the game, obviously, uh, but as you get more ships, you might be able to do this, and if you place three, you can spend three metal to put a colony directly onto the map. That's a very handy option, and it's a great way to uh, kind of start rushing your colony placement. This is the traditional way that you'll build colonies here at the Colonist Hub. Uh, you'll have to put dice into this location. It doesn't matter what kind of dice you put. And for every die you put, you'll either place or move your colony over one slot per die. It doesn't matter the value, just dice here, do things, and ship this over. Once it's over on its farthest most slot, you can, on your turn, any future turn, spend a solar and a metal to plop this colony down onto the map. Uh, that's a very handy way to just kind of slowly but surely make sure you're getting your colonies out. Um, definitely a very helpful option. The shipyard is how you will get additional ships or workers for this game. You'll put two equal matching die here, and then you'll spend the cost associated to the die that you're getting. If it's your fourth dice, your fourth worker, it'll cost you a solar and a metal, then two and two, then three and three. So if you want to get your full fleet of ships, it's going to be quite pricey, but of course it'll unlock more options for you and certainly open up your chances of doing the colony constructor way, which is a great way to get a lead, kind of get an edge up on the competition as you place your colonies. 
Uh, next and finally, we have the terraforming station. This is kind of the high risk, high reward option. If you have a six, which I did, uh, you can place a six here. You'll pay a solar and a metal to an instantly plop a colony down anywhere on the map. It's very handy, very efficient, but you do lose this dice permanently and it's going to go back to the shipyard where you'll have to buy it again. So you don't want to probably start your... Uh, your foray out into the game with that action, you might, uh, but then you'll lose that ship and need to have a plan to recover it as you go. But it's another great way to kind of rush your colonies out if you need to. So those are all the actions that you'll take in a in the base game. It's worth noting, again, this is a, traditionally a four-player game max. There is an expansion that you will add and open this up to five or six players as well if you so desire. So there's a lot of dice that are going to be sitting out here on the board clogging these options because it might look like there's a lot of things you can do, but as the game progresses, and more dice come out here and more dice are sitting, it's going to get very strategic and tactical about where you want to go, not just for yourself and how you want to play, but also how you want to try and intentionally block and slow your opponents as they progress throughout the game as well. Play will continue like this with people collecting and rolling their dice on their turn, placing them out, and getting colonies on the board until someone places their sixth colony out for a four-player game. It's different uh, depending on the number of uh, players in the game. And then we'll go into final scoring, which is going to be based on your colonies that are out, uh, areas you control, potential uh, tech or agendas, or specific special alien artifacts that you may have found throughout the game. And all of that will tabulate into your final score. The player with the most points is victorious. Let's go ahead now that we've looked at the base game and you hopefully have a general understanding of what you can accomplish as you collect these bonuses and place uh, your colonies on the board. Let's look at the three modular additions that you can add to the game and talk about what they kind of add and the, the extra depth that they'll bring into this title. Here we have a close-up look at the agendas and faction boards uh, that are modular expansions to Alien Frontiers. I don't know why these cards are so kind of washed out on the back, but that's just how they look. So <laughs> these are uh, examples of the cards that you would find in the agenda deck, as well as some of the boards you could have in the faction. So for the agendas, at the start of the game, every player will be dealt two agendas. They're going to present you with an in-game objective and an end-game objective uh, that you can use. So in and end. Uh, if you reveal this card and score or a point from either of these, uh, it'll be revealed, and that's all the points that you can get. You can get a max of one point per card, but you'll have two of these to start the game. So you have kind of an objective you can shoot for as you go throughout the game or at the end of the game that'll give you additional points. Now, whenever you use the orbital market, you can also put two matching die down on the market to draw uh, additional agendas that you can have. Now you can never have more than three total in the game, but you could cycle some that you may not be able to accomplish, or just don't feel confident in, to try and get more that will suit your needs. So you can uh, a score a max of three points from these in a game, but that's a lot of points that you can kind of bring to the table. So these are really great as an expansion. They give you some directive and help guide and drive the strategic choices that you'll make throughout the game, and they add a lot of fun. Next we have the faction boards. Every player will get one of these at the start of the game. They'll be kind of reverse drafted, so last player would get first pick out of, let's just say, four of these, would pick one that will be their home base, their home orbital facility, uh, and then every player will have one. Now, these will be locations that you could send a die to. Any player can go to this location. If it's not, let's just say this is not Green's home base, they can go here by paying a solar as a tax to the owner of the scavenger fleet. They can then take the action that is available there. So it adds additional locations you can go and visit and things you can do. Now, it also is going to add some kind of an owner bonus, which is really handy for the owner of this particular location. So it's going to give you, again, some really helpful options as the owner, but also as a player. Uh, places that you can go, assuming you have the solar to pay for these. Now, there is again a nice selection of these tiles, and they're not going to be in every game, so this adds a wonderful element of replayability and strategy that will come up as you play multiple games of Alien Frontiers. Here we have the Outer Belt expansion. Sorry for the dead space on the shot. This is just a really long piece of board here that will slot into the side of your main board. Uh, what the Outer Belt expansion adds to the game is going to be a new location that you can colonize with your colony vessels, uh, the Blish Expanse, and it will add an additional bonus and area to control on the game. It's also going to give you locations to send your dice. You can send your dice to the corresponding point locations to claim these asteroid cards. Uh, these cards are going to give you 
additional bonuses and value valuable points and all kinds of different things that they'll bring to your strategy. Um, but they're they're really fascinating because you'll tow them uh, with your dice. So you when you claim this card, you won't be able to use it on the turn that you collect it. Usually, it'll have this little symbol, which means it's in tow. It's going to come along with your dice back home, and then next turn it'll be available for you to use its particular ability. There are lots of cards available in the asteroid belt that will give you all kinds of options and advantages over your opponents uh, if you plan uh, correctly. Now, uh, every turn when you start your turn, you will roll this asteroid die that has four asteroid faces and two blanks. And if you roll an asteroid face, all of these dice, these cards will slide down, and a new one will appear at the the top of the location. So these cards will constantly be cycling to keep things fresh and exciting and give you lots of tactical options for new resources that you can gather. And that, in a nutshell, is everything you need to know to jump in and have a blast playing Alien Frontiers. Turns will go like this with players collecting and spending solar and metal to build their colonies until someone places their last. Then you'll get points for colonies on the board, areas you control, and any special cards or tech or things that you've discovered along the way that give you additional points, including the agendas if you're playing with that module. Uh, gameplay is fast, it's engaging, it's tactical, it gives you a lot of things to think about, but doesn't overwhelm a player because your choices get easily truncated down to the die values that you've rolled. Turns go quick, are engaging and enjoyable, and are a lot of fun. This game normally again is slotted for one to four players, but there will be, I'm sure, an expansion that will go back uh, as the original did and allow you to play with five to six players as well, because the rulebook references playing with five or six players. So there's lots of fun to be had in this title for lots of people in your gaming group. But what did I think about it? Uh, I love Alien Frontiers. Alien Frontiers is one of the earlier titles that I got into in my in my gaming life, uh, my gaming time, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I recently saw a review of Alien Frontiers stating that it was great in 2010 and is just not very engaging or innovative now, and honestly, I just strongly disagree. The fact that this title is still being talked about, reprinted, played, I think is a testament to how innovative and quality this title is. Again, for a game that almost single-handedly created and opened the door to a new genre or niche of gaming, I think one is a huge golden star for it. And honestly, the, the, the design of this title is very solid. Uh, you have this simple mechanic that gives you a lot of tough tactical choices. You're rolling these dice as your workers, trying to figure out the best place to optimize what you've got. Can you modify your dice with tech or different skills? And how can you stop or block what you think your opponents are trying to do all at the same time? Uh, maximizing your turn while minimizing your efficiency of your opponents. There's a lot of cool uh, depth to unlock in this title in a way that won't overload even a new gamer like myself when I first discovered this title. Quality stuff. The reprint itself that Starling has brought is great. The components are all there. You've got the adorable little bubble colonies, which let's be honest, that's why we're buying the game, right? Uh, good dice, solid dice, good for good for chucking. Great co looking components, little resources. There's some nice heft to them. They're very fun. Uh, and then again, having these modules that were honestly really tough to find. I had an earlier edition of Alien Frontiers for myself, but I could never find the faction boards that I wanted and I always hated that. It bugged me as a collector of like, oh my gosh, I'm missing a few of these things. And so having everything packed into one is really refreshing, really nice, uh, and quite a fun experience to bring to the table. The rulebook is very clear. It has illustrated guides to every questionable tech card, faction board, location. Uh, it's all laid out here in black and white, and there's no questions. You, your gaming group won't have to say, well, how do you interpret this card? Well, the rulebook tells you how to interpret it. It's great. <laughs> it makes things really easy. Uh, and so that your team can just get in and have a great time with this engaging title. Uh, lots of fun here. Again, I don't really have anything negative to say about this title. It's all of the fun that I remember from Alien Frontiers years ago, uh, just repackaged and collected into one nice box so that you don't have to go scavenger hunting for all of the pieces that you want to add to uh, this amazing game. So if you're looking for a dice worker placement game, whether you're new to gaming or just want to kind of re-up uh, something you've had in your collection before, the X edition of Alien Frontiers by Starlink is going to be great. It's not going to break the bank, and it's going to be a really great addition for your group. So I encourage you to check it out. Uh, I hope this gameplay review and tutorial was informative, was helpful. Um, 
I hope it gave you a good idea of what to expect when you open up the box and a good idea of how to jump in and play uh, and enjoy your first time with Alien Frontiers. Uh, I hope if you like what we're making here at Meeple Mountain that you'll continue to come back and check us out for all of your gaming content related needs. Uh, be sure to hit that like button, the bell, subscribe. Uh, that means a lot to us and lets us know that you guys enjoy what we're doing. Anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and will continue to come back for more. Uh, as always, happy gaming. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out these links to find some other games you might want to bring to the table. This is Tyler Williams, signing off.